Tesla's AI day showed us one of the greatest engineering accomplishments of the modern era. And no, we're not talking about the Tesla bot today. We've all seen and heard about the robot and yes, we're very excited. But today we want to bring the conversation back to the real point of AI day and the core of Tesla's artificial intelligence program, the self-driving car. We've been speculating for months here about how Tesla's vision-based self-driving program worked and what exactly it was doing. And not to pat ourselves on the back, but I think we got pretty close to figuring it out. We had most of the right ideas. But now that Andre Carpathy and his crew have actually shown us in full detail just how this system is operating, we find out that it's actually on a higher level than we ever had imagined. It's taken a week of just absorbing this information and really thinking it over to get a grasp on how crazy the full self-driving system really is, and then trying to fathom just how much better it's going to get in the very near future. And that's what I wanna to talk to you about today. So let's get started. I think the biggest takeaway from the AI Day presentation was this real understanding of just how Tesla cars are seeing the world, the Tesla vision. We'd previously made the assumption that the vision system was seeing in eight directions at once and reacting in real time, kind of like a driver with eight sets of eyes and lightning fast reaction time, which in and of itself would be amazing. And that's how Tesla were previously running the system. That's also probably how most other automakers are running their autonomous driving systems as well. But Tesla wanted to do better. And that's where we reach that higher level where Tesla stands above everyone else. So the problem that they identified with using eight single camera feeds was that nothing ever aligned properly. There were seams between the video feeds, lens distortions, differences in perspective, plus the fact that every Tesla car was built a little bit cockeyed in its own unique way. So we have eight cameras that are all reporting separately on their own incomplete view of the world. One camera is saying, I see the front of a truck, and another camera is saying, I see the back of a truck. And then the FSD computer is trying to digitize those streams of information and plot them into the vector space which is that digital representation of the world that we see on the car's screen when autopilot full self-driving is active. If we look back now on the older videos of that vector space, you see how jagged and jittery and nearsighted that representation really was. That's because nothing was ever lining up properly in the car's brain. And that explains why during autopilot sessions in the past, the car could be pretty jerky and hesitant in tricky situations, but, those were the old days. The new way that Andre just showed us is a masterwork in computational photography. So we have eight cameras shooting at 1280 by 960 pixels in 12 bit HDR at 36 frames per second. So there is not a ton of resolution, but there is a lot of tonal range in each picture. The camera is capturing a lot of detail in the dark areas and bright areas of the frame. Just like when you use the HDR setting on your phone. The FSD computer is then taking all of those images and stitching them together into one single image, essentially taking eight cameras and making them one. This is the same thing that's happening when you use panorama mode on your camera app. You move the phone from side to side and as it moves, it's taking a series of individual shots. Then the computer in the phone takes those shots and lines them all up, chooses which parts of what photos are the best tries to make sure there isn't any ghosting or doubling or seams showing, then it outputs one picture for you. And it doesn't look like 20 different pictures from 20 different camera positions. It looks like one shot taken by one camera. Another example of this kind of computational photography would be a 3D Matterport scan. If you've bought a house or even considered buying a house in the past year and a half, then you've definitely seen a 3D virtual tour of a house created by a Matterport scan. The Matterport camera spins around on a tripod and takes a series of photos that are all merged together into one 360 degree view. Then the photographer moves the camera to a different point in the room and takes another 360 photo, and then another. And then the Matterport software takes all of those 360 degree images and merges them together to one seamless photographic representation that allows a viewer to move through the house 
and look around in any direction they want virtually. That's the process that Tesla's FSD computer is doing to create the single camera view. And it's doing this in real time with zero latency. The computer is recreating its 360 degree composite photo 36 times every second as new frames of video pour in from eight different inputs. So now instead of looking straight out in eight different directions at once, the car is actually seeing one view from a top-down perspective, like a Google Earth satellite image. Now, when we take that one seamless bird's eye view image and convert that into the vector space, we don't get a jagged, janky mess. We get perfectly smooth, consistent lines that the car can drive through in a smooth and consistent manner. So take a second to appreciate that sheer volume of calculations. We're going from eight cameras to one camera to vector space with zero lag. Now think back again to panorama on your phone. Once you're done taking the photos, the system needs a couple of seconds to generate your final image. Full self-driving can't just take a second to process information. It can't just stop and buffer in the middle of a turn. All of this really complex stuff is just happening constantly and seamlessly. Then there's the idea that the camera is not just seeing in real time, but it's actually considering the past and the future in the same moment. So we can gather that the object memory of the FSD computer is between 1.5 and 2 seconds in length. And that means that when the camera's view is being temporarily blocked, like by cross traffic, the system isn't constantly losing and reacquiring those objects that are on the other side of the traffic flow. It will remember what it saw there before the view was blocked and assume that those objects still exist even if they can't be seen. The spatial memory of FSD is much longer than that. This is the memory that keeps track of things like where the curbs are, what lines are on the road, what are the road signs saying. For example, if the car drives over an arrow on the road as it approaches an intersection, it's going to keep that arrow in mind until it's cleared the intersection, even if that means stopping for a minute at a red light. Things like road marking and signs that appear 50 meters before a turn are going to be critically important to making predictions about how traffic will flow through the intersection. If the car just forgets these things once they are out of sight, then it would have to go back to a reaction-based driving, which leads back into that jerky, hesitant ride that we don't want. This is also key in situations where the camera view is being blocked by some external factor. During AI Day, they used the example of snow flying off the top of a truck. As a Canadian, this is a situation that has happened to me far too many times, and I'm not gonna lie, it's scary as shit when it does happen. When that snow flies up and blocks your view, it's very important as a driver to stay calm and just remember what you saw before it happened and stay on your path. If you freak out and hit the brakes or try to swerve around the snow or go out of your lane, then you're probably going to cause a crash. And luckily, your self-driving Tesla should do the same thing. It's going to remember the object that was on the road before the view was blocked. It's going to remember where all of the lane lines are, even if it can't see them right now, and it's going to stay the course, no freakouts. Then that leads us into how the car is seeing the future, or predicting the future at least. For every object that appears in the vector space, the FSD computer is running a series of predictions for every course of action that the object might take. So for every other car on the road, the system is not just reading distance and velocity, it's also making a list of possible actions that the car might take. And as the car gets closer and closer, the system is able to narrow down the list of possibilities until it has a very good guess about what move every other driver on the road is about to make. And then all of those possibilities and predictions are going to get mixed together with information from the road surface and the traffic lights and the traffic signs to inform the path that your car chooses to take through its environment. The number one priority of the car as it moves through space is don't hit anything. That's pretty self-explanatory. The second priority is accuracy basically meaning stay inside the lines. And third is driver comfort, meaning don't brake too hard, don't accelerate too hard. Just because the car can do zero to 60 in three seconds, doesn't mean it should do that on every acceleration. Just because the car can take a hard corner at 60 miles an hour, doesn't mean that it should. 
So the other big takeaway from AI Day was this new information about Tesla's machine learning and auto labeling system, which is what Project Dojo is all about. The vision system is amazing, but it doesn't matter what the car can see if the car doesn't know what it's looking at. That's where labeling comes into play. We have to give the car a name and a weight for everything that it is seeing. So imagine this in the room that you are sitting in right now. I can look up from my computer and see four plants right now. At the low level, I could put a sticky note on each pot that labels them as a plant. That's good to know, but it's not enough information. Then we could go up a level and add another sticky note that labels each as parsley and basil and so on. Then we'd probably want another label to say which plants are edible and which are not. And then we'd probably also want a label that says which plants should be watered once a week and which need water every couple of days. Imagine having to do that process for every object in the room. It would get exhausting, but that's the level of input that a computer needs to understand what it is seeing in the real world and how to interact with it. Hopefully my weird analogy on trying to explain how Tesla has to go about this labeling process makes sense. They get video clips fed back to them by the cars on the road, and then they have to attach a label and a weight to every object in each clip. And it's not really enough to just say, this is a car and this is a truck, because different kinds of vehicles will behave in different ways while driving. And a truly self-driving car needs to know things like how garbage trucks will stop in the road to collect trash, and that you need to drive around them. Just try and fathom how many different labels need to be applied to different kinds of dogs. Obviously that's more work than human labelers could possibly do, and that's why Tesla needs machine learning supercomputers to perform auto labeling on millions of frames of video collected by hundreds of thousands of cars. And that's where Dojo comes into the picture. Tesla wanted to build their own supercomputer that is designed in-house to meet their specific need, which is neural net training and machine learning. No one has ever built a computer from the ground up specifically to do this task before. Up until Dojo, Tesla has been using GPU-based systems or graphics cards as you might know them. These GPUs are mostly designed to play video games and render graphics, but we know that they can work well for other applications. For example, mining cryptocurrency is another famous one. And machine learning, also another. But that's not what those components were built to do. The Dojo D1 chip was built for the sole purpose of powering neural net training and machine learning. It's not for playing cyberpunk, it's for teaching robots. Because of that bespoke design, the D1 chip has the capability of five graphics cards contained in something that you can hold in the palm of your hand. Then Tesla can place 25 of those chips into a tile that is about the size of a big laptop and still manages to contain all of the necessary power regulation and cooling systems. Basically, power comes in from the bottom of the tile and heat goes out through the top. These tiles offer something like 36 terabytes per second of bandwidth. And that's the thing that Tesla has just managed to get working. Apparently, they only got Dojo running on the tile level the night before AI Day. So keep in mind that everything Tesla has accomplished with full self-driving up until now has been done without Dojo, without this training tile. And tile is just the first level. Tesla can combine 12 tiles into one cabinet and then 10 cabinets can be combined to form one exapod or training mat. That's one exaflop of power. A flop stands for floating point operations per second. I don't know what that means, but an exapod can perform 10 to the power of 18 floating point operations per second. That number is one with 18 zeros behind it. It's honestly mind boggling and that computer hasn't even been turned on yet. Just think about how crazy all of the things that we've learned so far have been and then imagine all of that moving five times faster when Dojo gets up and running. That's what AI Day was all about. That's why Tesla is one of the craziest companies on the planet. And that's why most people out there just don't get it. This stuff is not easy to understand. You have to spend the time thinking about it to really grasp the importance and most people just won't bother. So unfortunately, we'll just have to wait for them to see it before they can believe it. But until then, at least we all know. And let's keep the conversation going in the comment section down below. 
Let us know if you're more excited about the Tesla bot or all the new FSD information we got from Tesla's AI day. Also subscribe to our Tesla Space newsletter for weekly updates on all things Tesla and Elon Musk related delivered straight to your inbox. Link in the description to sign up. It's theteslaspace.com. And please remember to move our emails into your primary inbox so we don't get lost in the promo folder. As always, if you want to continue to learn about everything regarding Tesla, SpaceX, and Elon Musk, we've got two more video options for you on the screen to check out. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it, and subscribe to our channel for weekly content just like this.